Awesome. So I appreciate you guys. Today is, uh, well, this whole week is the starting Friday night is Passover. So as soon as the sun goes down, you know, you're not allowed to work for, for 24 hours if you're following the letter of the law. If you're not, it's still cool to take Friday night off and, and, and Saturday and enjoy the day and, and just realize that uh, God loves you and, and uh, he has a Passover in store for you through, through Jesus Christ. And uh, but today's message that uh, we're covering the fruit of the spirit. And last week we covered that love means to uh, to give favor and forgiveness to the people that God calls you to give favor and forgiveness to. And it's not selfish. It's what it's just giving it because you want to give it because God put it in your heart to give. And, and that we also know that um, joy is being aware of of God's favor and presence on your life. And this week we're gonna look at um, peace and uh, we're gonna look at patience and, and then we're gonna do something wild and crazy. We're gonna look at a message that was in all four gospels and I put them all together into one. And it's, it's, it's the last time that they had a major Passover in which Jesus Christ was crucified and um, you know, what did he, you'll see him provoking the crowds and helping them, um, uh, encouraging them to basically help crucify him. <laughs> and so he did some things that doesn't seem peaceful, but remember he was led by the spirit and it may not seem like he had patience with him, but remember he was led by the spirit. And so we're going to try to filter it through the eyes of the fruit of the spirit. And we'll see it in a whole different way than we've never seen it before. So, but let me dive right into it by um, actually sharing my screen. I am going to take you down a path that, um, so that if people go to our website, they go to DustinLaport.com, they go to Weekly Message, they can scroll down the fruits of the Spirit, and then coming soon, that's what we'll be replacing that soon with peace and with patience, PMP. And, but you see right here, we got the fruit of the Spirit worksheet. And they can click on to that and they could see what the fruit is. They could see what the opposite is and they can see the definition of it. So peace, the opposite of peace is confusion and chaos. And if you look at the Hebrew word for peace, it means to take authority over chaos. Now they translate it today in modern English as prosperity, peace. You hear the word shalom. It's the way that they greet each other. But if you look really into the depth of the word pictures that make up the Hebrew language, it actually shows that you're taking authority over chaos. So it doesn't mean there's an absence of chaos. It means you take authority over that chaos. Now, in Greek, it means all the essential parts are joined together. And that is, um, if you look at what happened with Adam and Eve, you look at Adam, God breathed his Holy Spirit into him. And he says, as soon as you eat of this fruit of tree of knowledge of good and evil, as soon as you do that, you will die. Now, he did not physically die, but what did die in him was the Holy Spirit living inside of him. And that was taken away from him. And so every human being has this hole inside of their heart that, that only God can fill and they try to fill it with drugs. They try to fill it with pornography, women. Uh, for men, it's it's their women, wealth, and their work. Somehow, some way, they're trying to fill that hole up that only God can fill. And so peace is all the essential parts joined together. And patience, patience comes from two words in Greek. It means long, during, distant, far or far from. It has all those three different meanings. You need long duration of suffering. In some translations put it that you can put up with a lot of, of mess <laughs> or you're far from. And what the second word is passionate, uncontrollable anger. So you're far from passionate, uncontrollable anger, or you have long duration of having to endure this passionate, <laughs> uncontrollable anger, but you hold it in, so it is controlled. So patience, the opposite of patience is uncontrollable anger. And so, and you know that, you've been in the car <laughs> and you've been in that line 
where you're in a hurry, you got things to do, and you have to endure, and you have to, you know, maintain your composure. So those are the two words we're focusing on today, and we're going to read the part of the scripture. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for right now, and I'm going to change my background and, and show the, um, the scripture that I want us to read today. And... Um, do, do, do. There we go. I don't know if you guys can see that. Actually, I'll, I'll just do share my screen just to be safe. It's also awesome, me cheating a little bit here because it's so small in the background. <laughs> I cannot read it. <laughs> so uh, there we go. And. Uh, Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm going to hit slideshow here. Or maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> from the beginning or from the current slide? Let's try from the current slide. Now this really is more for the people out there who are, are viewing this with us, watching this. Um, I'm, I'm going to do share here and take a look. There we go. So here's the scripture. This is probably one of the most violent scriptures, if you interpret it as violent, that you can get with Jesus. It's in, well, like I said, I took four different gospels and put them together, put little parts of each one to just give you a, a complete understanding of what's going on. So it's the Passover. This is the time that the Jews get together to celebrate their victory over uh, being slaves in Egypt. And Jesus went to the temple during that time period, and he walked in there, and he saw them selling oxen and sheep and pigeons, and he saw the money changers sitting there, and he walked out. He saw them, and then he walked out, and he took the time to make a whip of cords. Now just imagine that. He's, this is Jesus making a whip. Now they made sure, the writers made sure that you knew it was of cords. It wasn't the whip that the Romans used that had like knives built into it, you know, jagged rocks. And then I don't know exactly the, the main thing it was, those type of whips were designed to rip the flesh off of people. But no, this was a whip that you would use to drive out uh, animals and that's exactly what he did he drove out all of them the sheep the oxen the the people he drove them out and he poured the coins i can see it now kind of like um <laughs> like a rock star dropping the microphone you know he poured out the 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 coins that these money changers had and he just I can see him just the coins just going all over the place and I can see people grabbing those coins and he turned over their tables. And then he looked to the pigeon sellers and he told them these things that take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. And then Jesus, he had something against these pigeon sellers. He turned over their seats. I mean, that, that makes it really personable. He not only turned over the tables, but he turned over their seats where they were sitting of those who sold pigeons. Now, I personally, I think, it, and I was reading Leviticus last week, and, and I think I believe it was the pigeons were for the, the poor people who can afford the bulls and the rams and the goats. And, and But I may be wrong, but I am just saying I, it's not unlike Jesus to get upset of people taking advantage of the poor. So he would not allow them to carry anything through the temple. And notice this, one of the writers put in there, and I believe this is Mark, is that he said that he was teaching them as he was saying to them. Now, that's the important part, because I mean, I don't know about you, but I've had it where uh, my mom's been upset with me or my wife's been upset with me. And it was very difficult for me to think that they were teaching me as they were yelling. So maybe Jesus wasn't yelling. Maybe he really was teaching them. And according to the scripture, that's what he was doing. So it is not, is it not written? My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. 
And the chief priests and the scribes heard it, and they were seeking a way to destroy him. Now, just pause for just a second. This is Passover. This is like a huge, huge celebration. This would be like us walking into someone's church and kicking the pastor out. And this is like, woo! I sound like I'm echoing. <laughs> woo! So, um, that was uh, whoever did that was great for sound effects. I love that. So, sorry, hold on. That, that's all right. And um, but just imagine this. It's it's not only that, but this is a big time where they're selling a lot of things. This is like the the Christmas season. They've got all these people there for a whole week, and they only have a week to sell them all these birds and all this stuff. And this guy Jesus comes in and disrupts their business. So the chief priests, the scribes, they heard it. They were seeking a way to destroy him because they feared Jesus because of all the crowds were astonished by their teachings, by Jesus' teachings, not their teachings. And Jesus was teaching them daily in the temple. Not only did he knock out the money changers and all them, not knock them out physically, but kick them out, but he was teaching them daily in the temple. And the chief priests, the scribes, the principal men, uh, we're seeking a way to destroy them, but destroy Jesus, but they could not find any way to do it with all the people hanging on his words. And this, a lot of people don't pay attention to this, but Jesus let the blind and the lame to come inside of the temple. To, a lot, to some people, that was considered sacrilegious, but he let them come in and he healed them. He healed them. And that's what the temple was originally designed for, was for healing. So, um, that's what I got to say about that now and 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 what I want us to focus on now and this is what I want us to have some talk and, and communication about is what's going on here you know what is um when you when you see, hear this I want you to screen it through the thoughts of love joy peace patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, self-control. Uh, I personally, when I first read it, I think of a violent Jesus. But remember, Jesus was led by the Spirit. So when you're led by the Spirit, love flows out of you, joy flows out of you, peace flows out of you, patience flows out of you, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness. So uh, starting with the first line, tell me if you see anything here on any of these fruits of the spirit, the Passover of the Jews was of hand and Jesus went to Jerusalem. Do you see anything there? I mean, this is, this is a traditional thing that's been going on for many, many years. And there's a high probability he's going to get killed if he shows up there because they, they're already wanting to kill him. Um, what do you see there? Anything you see? And I, I'm going to read some of the words, and, and, and you guys interrupt me as you see some of those those fruits of the Spirit come out. But first thing I see is faithfulness. How many times have you not want to go, go to church or want to go do something and just where you are not in the mood? Faithfulness, hey, there's Brian. Faithfulness is, you know, being in the mood. You know, it's getting there. And, and regardless of um of how you feel the word faithfulness and we'll come to it in the future means divinely persuaded but in the temple jesus saw those who were selling sheep and oxen pigeons and money changers sitting there so he's seeing something that offends him see any of the fruit of the spirit coming out of there i mean to me at that point where he saw all those people, you know, basically robbing the money. In my opinion, I think he'd be pretty mad. Um, like you talk about with patience and stuff like that. I can assume Jesus was extremely upset, extremely mad about these people. And uh, I think in the way he didn't have patience with these people because he also had to teach these people. And, and like you were saying, he was teaching these people, you know, of what was right. And uh, I think at one glance, you think maybe he had uncontrollable anger or something like that. But when you really dive deeper into it, 
I think more so it was love and, and not really anger. I, I think sometimes love could be like that too, where sometimes you, you just have to show extreme amounts of love. And, and maybe that version of his love and you're turning over to tables and stuff like that. I mean, I think in a way that was more so love than it was for anger. Um, so to me, I think it just kind of taught them a way of understanding Jesus' love and what he had for us. I agree. For sure. I agree. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes love can be misinterpreted too. I mean, I, you know, that's probably one of the biggest things as being married. Sometimes you can interpret their anger as being unloving. But in his case, Jesus, you remember, he was still love, patience, peace, kindness. And remember, peace is taking authority over chaos. He saw chaos going on there. He saw something not going in the direction and flow that God had called it to go, you know, which is, you know, love means preferring what God prefers to favoring what God favors. And if God doesn't favor it, then sometimes you have to step up in this case. Now, remember also Jesus, it was time for him to be crucified. And so he had to do some things and he did some things that purposely upset the community purposely and because it was time the time had come. So, but if you filter this through, this is not, this is an angry Jesus in the sense of righteous anger, but it's not an anger that's uncontrolled. How do I know it's not uncontrollable anger? Look at this next line and making a whip of cords. You know, that's, um, that's premeditated. If I, if it was going to be, uh, if this was a trial, that is premeditated, you know, and he, he's, he knows exactly what he's doing. And he drove them out of the temple and he poured, poured the coins out, uh, over to turn their tables. Um, do you see any other, the fruits of the spirit in there at work? Anything stand out to you? Do you see goodness? Oh, meekness. Now we haven't covered that word, but meekness means strength. Under uh, it means um, gentle force or gentle strength. <laughs> and that's that, that's pushing it a little bit here, you know, turning over their tables. But did he whip them? Did he physically hurt them? No. So in essence, he, he, hurt, he hurt their pride. <laughs> so anything else you see anything there? Um, you know, not only did he tore, tear up the temple, <laughs> he started teaching them. If you're extremely upset, how easy it is to teach people? Probably not easy. <laughs> it used to crack me up um, to see parents yelling at their kids, and I'm thinking to myself, they are doing everything they can to protect themselves. They're tuning out everything that mom or dad is saying, and the only thing that they're hearing is, my mom hates me or my dad hates me and and I need to disrespect them because they are disrespecting me. And then the parents get upset again. It's this vicious cycle. They didn't do what I said, <laughs> you know, but he was under control as he did this. And I want to show that just look at the response of the um, the Pharisees, the scribes, you know, how did they handle it? And let's see here, just take a second. For some reason it is no longer on my screen. Fruit of the Spirit. I think it's this one. Yeah. Selfishness, fear, the opposite of the fruit of the spirit is selfishness, fear, 
confusion, unholy anger, pride, spiritual insensitivity, hypocrisy, demanding, and egotism. That's the opposite. And the chief scribes, when they heard Jesus and they saw Jesus kicking the, the money changers out and basically taking over and he was doing the teaching, they feared him because of the crowds were astonished of his teaching. Not only was he teaching them, he was also healing them. They were seeking a way to destroy them because they feared him. Can you see anything the opposite of the fruit of the spirit there? Brian, I can't hear you, my friend. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm having problems actually seeing everything. I've got a low internet connection and everything's blurry oh. <laughs> on my side. So I'm having some problems. All right. Well, um, um, so one of the one of the spirits there, uh, when you start feeling, by the way, the way we look at the fruit of the spirit and the opposite of it is when you start feeling these certain emotions, it tells you whether you're in alignment with the spirit or not. So when you're feeling selfishness, fear, confusion, unholy anger, pride, spiritual insensitivity, hypocrisy, and you're demanding your way over God's way and, and your ego gets involved, um, that's the opposite of the fruit of the spirit. So I'm gonna read this sentence again. Tell me if you guys can see any of these um, mark, trademarks of, uh, of not being led by the spirit. Now, remember, these are the chief, these are the apex of that society of what Christianity, uh, Judaism is to look like. The chief priests, the scribes heard it and they were seeking a way to destroy Jesus for they feared Jesus because all the crowds were astonished by his teachings and because he was also healing them. So they, so the intimidation yeah. uh, of Jesus was almost too much for them to bear. Yeah, we, he, they're like the pastor of this church and they just got kicked out by Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and they were hanging at his words. Talk about some serious jealousy. Yeah, absolutely. And was he doing good? You know, was he doing what God called him to do? Yeah. Yeah, of course. But they were, <laughs> they were spiritually insensitive. They couldn't see that this was the son of God. And he was teaching not only one time, not only did he kick him out one time, but it says daily in the temple. <laughs> Who was supposed to be teaching daily in the temple? Now, remember, this is the apex of one of their most important religious holidays. Who's supposed to be teaching daily in the temple? Them. <laughs> and he just kicked them out. <laughs> um, can you see why they wanted to kill him? <laughs> and... He also took in the blind and the lame. No blind, blind or lame priests were allowed in, even in the temple. They weren't even allowed to come in the temple. And he was bringing not only priests in, but non-priests in. He was bringing the blind and the lame into the temple, and he healed them. That was extremely offensive to him, too. And a lot of people don't see that, so... He violated so many of their own um, personal rules. And yet he was completely led by the spirit. And, and I bring that up because in this culture of everybody's, uh, what they call it, the woke culture, W-O-K-E, that they've woken up to, oh, that offends me, where um, you you say something like G.I., Jane, you call a girl who's got a shaved haircut, G.I. Jane, you know, someone who, G.I. Jane is someone who defends our country, who cares for our country, who will sh even shave her head to, to go to battle so that nothing will hold her back. And that offends 
another man and the guy comes up and smacks him on the face. Mm. You know, it, it's yeah. yeah. Being offensive in this case with Jesus, he offended them, but he offended them to wake them up in a good kind of wake up, if that makes sense. There, there's so many people who are so sensitive but just not spiritually sensitive right now, if that makes any sense. Now, I know, I know in that situation that his wife was losing, I now know that his wife was losing hair, but still, (laughs) that was not the proper response. And um, so there are times in which, I don't know if you've seen it, where religious leaders get offended by other religious leaders and they handle it in a way that doesn't edify God. And so, and remember, peace is taking authority over chaos. Patience means controlling your anger so that your anger doesn't control you. So I'm going to wrap us up in prayer and, and thank you lord for everything that you are doing in our lives as we remember this week that you died on the cross that jesus christ died on the cross for our sins but just like you saved the jews during passover you are saving us from our sins and you have saved us from our sins and you will forever save us from our sins because you have forgiven us of all sins. And the only thing that holds us back from a relationship with you is us. So Lord, forgive us for the times that we have not listened to your spirit. And Lord, let your spirit's presence be fully known in our life so that we can be completely awake to what you are doing so that we can walk in your favor without fear so that we can give your favor to others without fear and that we will walk in peace because all the pieces are come together now that your Holy Spirit lives inside of us, Lord. And then we ask for that overwhelming power of patience to be able to endure everything that comes our way because you love us, because we have your favor, because we walk in your favor. And because we are all together in peace, because we have your peace that lives within us through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Awesome.